Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are making this adorable little chicken plushie. So the only thing that's going to be different when we are done today is I'm using a smaller size eyeball. So instead of the 16 millimeter, we will be using a 12 millimeter, but at the time this is all I had, so that's what I used. So this little guy is pretty cute. He works out pretty quickly and I'm excited to, to show you. So I'll set him over here and let's go through what we'll need. So actually I'm gonna first talk about this little red comb and his orange little beak here. So these were just, again, leftover scraps that I had, but I'm sure this was either a five or six bulky, super bulky red yarn. And this was an orange or rust colored number four worsted weight lion's brand yarn. So I'll set him here for now. So what else are we gonna need? We're also gonna need yarn, obviously. So I like to use this Bernat Blanket yarn. This is some of my favorite yarn to use. This is the first plushie I've actually ever made and they're a lot of fun. So I'm probably going to be doing a lot more with this type of yarn. So again, I will be right back. My dog needs out. So let's go over some of those things we need. Like I said, we need this Bernat blanket yarn. Uh, where does it say what kind it is? There we go. So this is vintage white. It is a super bulky number six yarn. It's recommended that you use a eight millimeter needle or hook. Right now, obviously we're crocheting, so we're gonna use a hook, but instead of using the recommended eight millimeter, I'm actually going to use a size I, which is a five and a half millimeter hook. And this is what that looks like. And I put it in this little thing. I don't even remember what it's called, but I wish I had known about this sooner. This has helped me so much and just saved me, saves me literally a ton of pain because I do have arthritis. And so crocheting a lot can really, really wreak havoc on, on my digits, right? On all my joints. And so finding this thing was really amazing. And you kind of just like twist it off. And it comes with a few of these little stopper guys, but depending on what kind of hook you have, it'll, you know, be bigger or smaller. Then you just feed it right through there, and twist it on, and you're good to go. And again, it just helps instead of having to have your hands like this the whole time, you can like spread spread your hands out a little bit and it's just easier. You don't really have to have to turn as much either. So another thing we will need is a tapestry needle just for kind of sewing in a few ends at the end. And we will use a stitch marker, some safety eyes, and again, we will be using 12 millimeter instead of six mil or 16 millimeter. I'll show you the difference here. So this is 16 millimeter, what I currently have in there, and we will be using the 12 millimeter instead. And of course we will need a scissors. I always say scissors, so don't judge me on that. And this is what the yarn looks like. Nice and big and fluffy. It's really soft, so it doesn't feel like it's chafing your fingers too much either. But this is what, what we'll be using today. So let's get into it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to make a magic circle and single crochet, six single crochets into it. So if you're not sure how to make a magic circle or you wanna you know, freshen up on some basic crochet stitches, I'll link the video to that over here, but I made one previously just on, on the basics and the magic ring or magic circle is, is in there as well. So let's begin with our magic circle. Maybe. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, 
five and six. And once you have your six, go ahead and close that circle just like that. So one of the biggest things too, whenever you're creating plushies or anything really is making sure that you are counting enough. And so one, two, three, four, five, six. We always wanna make sure that we have the same number that it says in the pattern. And for this pattern, the next thing that we're gonna do is end up with the second row having 12, 12 stitches. So we're gonna increase in each of these stitches. So that's two single crochets in each of them. have our 12 1 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so again always making sure that you count at the end there one thing that I forgot to mention and I apologize if you need to go back a row um, but when I'm doing plushies I find it easier to do this for the tension just kind of wrap it around twice but another thing that I like to do is to make sure that there won't be any holes at all in here after I, I fill it, I like to yarn under. So whenever you are doing this, most people say you yarn over, right? And pull it through. I want you to think about this a little bit differently. If your stitches seem a little bit loose, right, like regardless, if, you're, if you have looser stitches to start out with or they're just kind of regular, I would suggest you try doing a yarn under and pulling through. I find that it kind of tightens up the stitch a little bit more so that you don't have any holes. Now, if you're someone that you struggle to get your crochet hook in each of these holes because it's so tight to begin with, then I would just continue doing yarn over, right? We don't need to make that any, any more difficult than it already is. I think tension is probably one of the biggest things that that crocheters and, and knitters too, right? Have to go through and figure out that muscle memory on just how much tension you should have when you are crocheting. But long story short, I like to yarn under for plushies and making sure that this glides pretty, pretty easily and evenly through your fingers as you're going. Okay, so we have 12 and now the next thing we're gonna do if you don't want to count or you get lost a lot, I like using a stitch marker. Now, there's so many ways you can do things in crochet. I prefer just putting the stitch marker in just like this and closing it and then starting my first stitch. So we're going to do one single crochet like this. And as you can see, it's in that first stitch. Now, some people like to do one and then put the marker in that first stitch. I just put it around here to start out with. It's just, that's how it's easier for me. So when you're crocheting too, don't be afraid to kind of take things into your own hand and do things the way you feel is the most comfortable for you. So the third row here, we're gonna end up with 18 and we are going to single crochet and increase. And we're gonna keep doing that until we hit the end here. So single crochet, increase. One, two in that same one, single crochet the next stitch, and then increase.
then we are going to end on an increase here. Just like that. So now we went all the way around. This is that first where the stitch marker is, so we don't want to go on there. Now for the fourth row, we're going to put the stitch marker on here again. Okay, so now we are on the fourth row. So what we're going to do is we just got done doing a single crochet increase. Now we're going to do two single crochets and then an increase. So two single increase, two single increase, all the way around again. So one single, two single, increase, one single, two single, increase, and we're going to go around. on the increase and you should have so we just had 18 and now we should have 24 so always count 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 so got 24 here which is always a good sign so take that off put the stitch marker on again and then this is the last time we're going to do some increases so we just got done doing two single crochets and an increase. Now for the last, this last, next one here, we are doing three single crochets and then an increase. So this row is gonna go one, two, three, and then an increase. Just like that. And again, we're gonna, gonna we are going to continue around the circle until we get to the stitch marker. ended on an increase and we now have 30 so 30 stitches around so this is where it gets it, it gets good that you have the stitch marker because I always get lost and I don't want to count every time but this was row one two three four five and so now we are gonna be on the sixth row and now rows six through twelve are gonna be the exact same thing, and it's going to be to single crochet all the way around. So you have 30 stitches all the way around, 
So that'll be row six, and then you do it again for row seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So we're just gonna do that, and I'm kinda gonna do it with you. Like, I'll speed it up a little bit here, but we'll just have some nice music playing and let you go on from there. All right, here we go. Full stop. Can't believe I live in your thoughts. I think about you all the time, morning, evening, and midnight. Such a wonderful delight. Forgo. Give up everything that. It's all about 
to master who we are Nobody's gonna make me feel I'm off the charts Take it as I go Do it all right, I'll do it okay Stronger than ever Faded, it's not a shade of mine All in all, I'm doing fine Do it all right, I'll do it have something that looks similar to this here. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So now we have that. You can see he's going to start shaping up here once we kind of push on the bottom because he'll be sitting up so it'll look kind of like that. Just like this guy. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take out the stitch marker And then kind of fold it in half here. And we are going to slip stitch all the way across. And once you get about halfway across, that's when we're gonna start filling. So the slip stitching, you wanna go in through this next one here. And then that opposite side. Okay, so we're gonna push through both sides, pull through both sides, and that last loop here. So that's a slip stitch. So go through those two, pull all the way through, just like that. All the way through, just like that. All the way through. Okay, 
and then this is the point where I'm gonna grab some polyfill and start stuffing him. All right, we'll get some of that polyfill, kind of break up those fibers. And you simply start stuffing them. And the key to making this pattern work really well is to not overstuff it. I know I was kind of a little overzealous with the stuffing on the first one I did. He barely stood up. Remember, we wanted to be able to sit down, so I kind of just like push them like that so I know it, it actually sits. And now it's the time to insert the eyes. Now remember, I am using two 12 meter, millimeter eyes. Okay, so I just kind of eyeball it no pun intended, um, just like that. So I'm like, okay, is this gonna be, is he gonna be cute like that? Do I want it down one? Kind of where do I want his eye to be? And you can kind of see how it's gonna be when it's closed up. So I think I want his eye right here. So it's down one and probably you know, you can see a couple stitches here. So one, two, and then this third. So eye number one. And we want to place it on the exact same spot on the other side. And if you're not quite sure, just kind of like fold it in half and see if that's going to be pretty much equal there. So eyeball number two, just like so. And now we can finish slip stitching. And if you need to put a little more, you know, polyfill in there, go for it. This is a good time to do so. All right, here we go. So now we're gonna cut some of the excess off here. Just like that. And we're gonna pull this all the way through. So now he's kind of hanging there like that. So give that a nice little tug. And then I kind of just like to shape him a little bit, right? Kind of like a little boat. So I'll take the crochet hook and I'll kind of insert in here and go all the way up through the front. And this is where I will just pull this loop back. There we go. So now you can't tell that we had stitched him up there. And we're gonna give him a little clip right there. So now you can't see it at all. Good to go there. And that's what he looks like so far. Next thing we are gonna do is we are going to take your tapestry needle and a little bit of that orange orange yarn here so i found just found this one just now um it's the i love this yarn super soft super savings um looks like the color here is burnt pumpkin so I'm just gonna cut a little bit off. I don't have an exact measurement. Um, let's see here, I can though. I would say it's roughly 16 inches that I just cut off, but not necessary. So we're gonna thread that yarn through your tapestry needle. And once you look at them here, there's going to be kind of like a little I'll show you on this one here too. It's gonna to be a little further down. 
from the eyes. And I think I want to go through, I'm going to go through these two up here. So I'm going to pull it through like this, and I'm just going to keep kind of threading until I make a beak shape. Just like that. You don't want to pull it extremely tight, but making sure that the tension is, you know, it's not falling apart there. I'm going to do a few more, but this came off my, off my needle. So going through again. And again. I just don't want any white spots either. So go through again and probably do this bottom one here. Get rid of that little white spot. Just like that, pull him up a little bit. And there you have it, you have your little beak. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just kind of take the needle and pull through all of them a little bit, again, just to kind of like even them out, just like that. And then the next thing I will do is I'm gonna like make sure I go through a couple of these and then stick it in here. And I'm still coming back out through the same loop, but by going through a couple of these, you don't pull it all the way through. And then just lightly tug that. And we are going to tie him. So tie these two together. Again, you don't need to be super muscly. Just give it a nice snug little tie here. You can do two if you want. I'm paranoid, so I like to do two. And then you give it a little snip. Then we're gonna do the same thing that we did with that tail up here. But I'm just gonna go down here and up through that hole. And we're gonna grab those two pieces and we're gonna bring them down so you can't see them anymore. There's one, then I'll grab this other tail, and two. Perfect, so there you have it. He is good to go with that, and the next step is to do the comb up here. All right, for the comb, I'm gonna take some of the thicker yarn. I am gonna use a size H hook. You can use the same hook if you want, but I kinda want a tighter knit look on this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a slip knot. Insert your hook. We're gonna chain three. One, two, three, like this. And then we always wanna go in that second stitch here, one, two. So we are going to do a big increase in here. So right now there are three. We're only going to use these two. And we are going to do four in each of them. So I'm going to put this through and do four single crochets in each stitch here. So one. Oh my goodness. Four, and then we're going to do four more in that last stitch. So Ugh, I'm doing this one over again. I apologize about that. This yarn is not my favorite. It has unraveled quite a bit here. So uh, the second one, we are on one, 
two, three, and four. Perfect. So this will be the little comb. And we're going to cut a decent tail. So about that far. And pull through like that. Pull that tight. And that's what is going up here. So now what we're going to do is take our tapestry needle once again. And I'm actually just going to bury this little tail right here inside of him. So I kind of put it where I, wherever I want it here, right? I'm going to put it about there. So I'm going to want this tail to come through here. So I'll get rid of that at the end, but I just want to make sure that he goes through. So, so when you look up here, uh, I can, there we go. Some of the sunlight is has gotten crazy, but you can see that it kind of looks like there's a middle crease here. We want to kind of weave in and out of this part right here. So we're going to go like that with the tapestry needle and then wrap around these sections right here. So I'll show you what I mean by that. We are going to thread our yarn through the tapestry needle once again. Should have gotten a bigger tapestry needle, but that's all right. We will make it work. Okay. So we already know where we want the comb to go. And so I'm going to place this just want to make sure you can see it here so right under there and I'm coming up through it and I'll pull just like this so that's kind of what it looks like right now and then I'm going to put the needle through that little hole that's where that first stitch was so pulling the needle through there and that's just securing this bottom piece. So we pulled it through here on that side. And then we want to go through that middle section. And then I'm going to go like that, find a little stitch and pull through. Just like that. And then again, I'm going to find a, a stitch to go through. I'm going to pull. And then find another stitch in that middle section. There's one. Like that. And then I'm going to go through, I don't know if you can see this very well, make it a little bigger, but I'm going to go through this hole here. Just like that. Find another front stitch. This is might be the last one here. We'll see if I can find it. There we go. So I got that last stitch there. I'm gonna pull through. And then we want to do one more stitch just to secure that front. I'm gonna do this right here, kind of that front little loop, pulling through. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of make a little knot here. So I'm going to go through here. Just like this. And now I'm going to thread it through that loop just to make a knot at the end. And then you want to pull that kind of tight. Make sure you're holding the comb there. So you can see there's a little knot there. That's totally fine. And then we're going to do what I did with this one, that tail in the beginning. And I'm going to take their crochet hook. It doesn't have to be the same one. It can if you want, but that, that's not really, it's not really relevant. So I'm going to go through here, right where that last stitch was. And I'm going to pull through. And that came with it. Okay, so now you want to adjust your little comb there, 
and give it a clip right here. Then what I like to do is, obviously, that's on sight leak. Don't want it to look like we stabbed them or something, even though, I mean, I kind of am right now, right? But just kind of like poke that through. We don't want the red showing. Fluff them up again. Smack them around. Whatever you need to do. And voila. You now have your cute little farmhouse chicken. And that's what he looks like. I hope this tutorial was helpful and I hope you had a lot of fun making it. I know I have a lot of fun making these and I will be making a lot more of them for a fair that I have coming up in March, which is next month. So definitely excited for that and we'll see how see how these little guys sell, but I'm in a rural area, so I'm thinking these will do pretty well. But yeah, uh, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video, if there are any other animals or things you want me to make tutorials of, let me know in the comments. And also let me know what you're gonna name your chicken because I think it's important that we name them. And so right now I'm gonna name this one, I don't know, he looks like a Gilbert to me. Let's adjust his eyes a little bit, oh. <laughs> okay, adjusting the eyes a little bit, but yep, this is Gilbert. So let me know in the comments what you named your chicken and we'll go from there. But definitely subscribe if you want more content and to stay up to date with just other tutorials that I'm doing. So thank you guys so, so much. This is a lot of fun and yeah, we'll see you in the next one.